Okay, well, welcome to our online workshop. The topic for today focuses on the interactive rubric feature in Blackboard Ultra Course View. Now, the uh, rubric, interactive rubric tool, uh, really makes it possible for rubrics with click and score simplicity to be built into the grading workflow, which increases efficiency, which also supports consistent and high quality feedback. And I use it for my students, uh, and it does that and more. Now, during our workshop, we'll explore the interactive rubrics tool in Blackboard Ultra Course View, and I'll sample uh, interactive rubrics that are applied to various types of Blackboard assessments. Uh, we'll also highlight the steps for creating an interactive rubric using percentages and points, and, and points is a relatively recent addition to this aspect of the interactive ru rubric tool as well as applying it to an assignment for grading. And I'll, and I'll submit something as a student, and then I'll grade it as the instructor. My name is Dan Cabrera, and I've served as the Multimedia Coordinator for the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning since 2002. I consult regularly with faculty to integrate new multimedia communication technologies into their curriculum. And I develop and offer workshops. I create content such as blog articles and screencast tutorials for the department. I've also been teaching public health courses online for 14 years, but I had had an online presence since 1998. And during that time, I've used the interactive rubric tool in courses that were both an original and ultra course view. And so today we're focusing on the way it looks in the ultra course view. Let's list the workshop objectives. By the end of this workshop, you'll be able to describe what a rubric is, identify rubric components, and then demonstrate how to create a rubric, how to associate a rubric with an assessment, and how to grade with a rubric. So let's start off about uh, what a rubric exactly is. You know, for for uh, uh, early in my academic career when I was teaching and I was hearing about rubrics it it sounded it sounded like an interesting idea but I didn't really get it and I didn't use rubrics for the first few years while teaching um, but it in fact is a very useful tool it's an assessment tool so when we talk about assessment we're looking at well how are we going to measure uh, objectives and those could be you know course level objectives or uh, module level objectives some way to accurately measure what we purport to measure and so it is a, a simple mechanism a simple tool or instrument that hopefully does exactly that uh, and provides us sort of a set of, of accomplishments whether students are achieving what we're hoping that they're achieving what we set out for them to achieve it is a set of criteria for assessing performance and so uh, when you're measuring something you're obviously going to use a number of different aspects of that something uh, so you can determine whether in fact you are touching on all of those areas okay criteria for assessing performance it's also a scoring guide for graders and so for people who are who want to be want to be consistent and in, in what they're grading and want to know exactly what it is they're grading and it could be the instructor or it could be uh, teaching assistants who are grading uh, assignments for the instructor and so it provides them that that level of specificity um, to to be able to accurately measure what they're supposed to be and it's also an instructional guide for students, but really only if that rubric is shared with students. I, I've been sharing uh, uh, a rubric for many years, but what we're talking about today is an interactive rubric. I'm sorry, my phone is set up here. Let me just, oh, okay, <laughs> that was funny. Um, uh, where they where they were, were seeing a, a static image. It was just a PDF of what I purport to, to be grading them on. But for the past, I don't know, seven years or so, or maybe even more, I've been using interactive rubrics. And so while the students do have something to refer to, because I still provide that, that static image, that PDF of the rubric that I use, when I grade, it's, it's, it's a, much, uh, a much more active, vibrant, uh, useful tool. And we'll get into that. I'll, I'll actually go through a process of grading an assignment so you get, get to have that experience. According to H and Roddy, an assessment tool, a rubric is an assessment tool that lists the criteria for a piece of work and articulates gradations of quality for each criterion. Okay, so that's what it is, but why would you want to use it? Well, I, I think it's sort of implied in what it is uh, as to why would you want to use it. So for faculty, it provides more an opportunity for more objective and consistent grading. Uh, grading a, uh, how well student performance is on achieving objectives. Okay. It also provides a scoring guide for, uh, I have GAs, but it probably more appropriate to say teaching assistants. 
on how they uh, on how they grade uh, the assignment, especially if they're given the responsibility of grading something. Um, they may not have the experience or the depth of knowledge uh, that the instructor has for the content area. So this provides them an easier way to what to look out for. You know how you know how are the students going to be graded in a way that's that's consistent. It also ties the performance criteria to a course or programmatic objectives. And so if you're measuring something uh, that you're saying that they will be able to identify this, this, and this, then that'll be included in the criteria that you're, that you're measuring. So it'll be an easier way to, uh, to tie those things together. And you absolutely want to make sure that there's a connection between the assessment tool and the objectives. Uh, otherwise, you'll be missing the mark. All right. It's also a time saver, and, and and this I can attest to quite, quite clearly. I have sometimes uh, 40 or more students online who are who are submitting assignments, discussion board assignments every week, and uh, it makes very efficient time. I just go through it. I don't want to get to uh, through too many, but if if anything, it does make it a lot easier to grade, and I I can be certain that it's going to be consistently graded. Uh, it also provides a record of evaluation, so everyone has a uh, a rubric with the sort of the the uh, appropriate uh, settings for what what they scored on, depending on, on on what the criteria is. So they can always go back and they look at it. Um, if they have a question, they can always reach out to me and they says, "How come in this criteria you gave me this score?" Well, I can go back and I can look and easily see. Okay, this is why, and I'll be able to show them exactly. What aspects of that criteria were were uh, f you know lacking? Okay, so it provides great assistance for faculty and instructors and and teaching assistants and GAs. Why should a use uh, should a student want to uh, use a rubric? Well, it provides a clear explanation of what's being evaluated, um, and it's really important. The rubric is only valuable if you share it with the students. Now, I don't think I've ever come across a situation where a faculty member had a rubric but wasn't sharing it with the students. It really doesn't make sense to not share it with the students. It really provides them that sense of guidance, that sense of, of, of targeting. What exactly am I going to be graded on? It also provides a sense of fairness in grading because it is supposed to be con consistent. Everyone should be graded exactly the same. There's not, um, there, there's not going to be anyone who, just because the faculty member may know someone quite well, maybe for a while, that that person will be given an unfavorable advantage. So if you just look at, uh, if you just grade according to what the criteria is and level of accomplishment, uh, it should be consistent and fair. It also helps you to focus on important requirements. And so there are some, some things that you absolutely have to address. And you want to be able to do this in a very consistent manner, especially if you're, if you're measuring those important objectives. So it keeps you on task. So I don't think there's ever been a time where I've graded 40 students in one sitting at one time in one day. I, I like to really provide uh, some, some time. Uh, between the gradings, uh, it's any any sizable number of students, and so it it keeps me on task. So every time I I come to a new student, I can say, okay, this is how I'm grading for this criteria, this criteria, this criteria. And as I mentioned, um, uh, students can be confident in that it helps them focus on what is important. What will that instructor be grading them on, and and they can uh, respond to that uh, assignment based on that. And for them, it's also a time saver. They're, they, don't, they don't have to spend time wondering how they'll be graded. Okay. All right. So what about those, those all important components of a rubric? And I'm going to tell you what they are, but I'm going to show you what they are in just a few minutes. All right. So performance criteria really is you're asking yourself, what is being assessed? Uh, this is an essential component. Uh, could be an essential component of, of a task that is being performed, or the ability to identify a certain certain elements of an idea of a concept, or be able to use it to explain, or be able to use it to uh, to uh, create new content. Whatever that performance uh, expectation is, it should be clear, and once again tied to the objectives. Level of performance. And so even though you may have a criteria, you, you're going to grade according to how well that, that criteria is being met by the student. So we can use a scale in terms of you know low end of the scale to the upper higher end of the scale reflecting that level of performance. And it can be in, expressed in percentages 
or points. And I, I want to sort of emphasize this right here. Percentages really was uh, the, the what was available in the ultra course view up until about October of last year. So it was well into the fall semester when points were made available. And and points, um, I, I know for myself, uh, it's one of the reasons that sort of kept me from jumping in the ultra course view immediately because I used the interactive rubrics for, the, for my course, which was in the original course view. And I used those points uh, and I was comfortable with them. Um, but I still, I still jumped into the ultra course view, um, getting used to percentages, then I discovered that w that points were available, and so <laughs> I mean, to me, that that sealed the deal. Even though I already had been using it, now I'm completely immersed in the ultra course view. And then descriptors. Descriptors simply are in that cell. So you have you have a row, and those are uh, criteria. Then you have columns, which is level of performance. And so you you have a two uh, well, it's more than a two by two contingency table, but but within each cell based on whatever row you're in and based on whatever column you're in, um, you want to be able to have a specific designation or definition for what each level of performance looks like. So you can have characteristics that are associated with the specific levels. And you'll see what that means when, when we get into it. Yes, Colin, question? Yeah, so I, this is actually a question I was wondering uh, before. So. Um, and maybe, and maybe maybe it's better addressed when we actually start looking at this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But is there an, an option in Ultra to like enter your own value? So say my rubric is you know one two three four five, uh, but it's not quite a four. It's not quite a five. So I want to give them a four point five. Right right now my yeah. I can I can, I have to pick right. Um, so you, yeah, that, that <laughs> it's a great question. question. It is a great question, Colin. So let me let me put it this way. Uh, when I grade my uh, when I grade my discussion board, I have 20 points. Um, so I've got four levels. Uh, uh, I've got I've got five uh, five criteria. Uh, oh no, no. Let, let me give you a, a better one. Uh, an assignment. This is the single the uh, individual case study analysis assignment. So they get a score of 50 points. And so based on that criteria, and, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, I can either give them okay if if to get the highest level they have to they have to score I don't know however many points that, that is, but you can you can have a point range, so it could be that you know for that in, that uh, specific criteria it could be from well let's just say ten points it could be from ten to eight points, and it would still be recognized in the high categories but you can you can offer that level of measuring specificity because you say well you know it was it was uh, an, an excellent but it wasn't <laughs> Upper upper tier excellent, so I'm going to give them an eight instead of a ten. Okay, um, so it's easy when you have higher scores. However, I have my discussion board assignment, and that discussion board assignment really has uh, uh, the highest that that a person could score in a particular criteria is only four points. Okay, then the the next level of performance is three points, and and so it's difficult. I don't believe there is the ability to have a like a uh, 3.5, which is close to 4, but it's not quite a 4, simply because of the um, uh, there's very little there's very little wiggle room. Okay, if you're saying that uh, people who who score between 8 and 10 uh, for this one criteria, you can give them an 8 or a 9 or a 10. I don't know whether you can go a point uh, 8.5 or 9.5 or whatever it happens to be. Um, that's a good question. I'll follow up. I'll see if I can get an answer for you regarding that. I have not seen that as an option up to this point. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, that's still unclear. Thank you for asking, though, and I, I promise you to get back to you with the response. All right. Let's see. All right. So let's look at let's look at this, and and I'm giving you some examples. These are just uh, screen captures, but I can actually go through it in real time when I share my screen. All right. So this is an example of uh, the rubric layout. This is the rows, and right now we're looking at performance criteria. And I've sort of identified. Let me just make sure that I can. Okay, here. This is, first criteria is knowledge of subject matter. So we know. Okay, that's one way in which I'm measuring success, successfully accomplishing the objective for uh, you know that I'm using the assessment tool for. So it's the discussion board uh, tool. Then uh, let me just see if I have another one here. And now evidence of research. That's another aspect of how students are responding to it. Um, uh, you can't really see uh, 
that clearly, but right below it is addresses the assigned topic. And so each one of these are important criteria that I will use and that my students are aware that I will be using and uh, whenever they respond to a, uh, um, whenever they post to the discussion board for an assignment for the week. The next aspect in the rubric layout is the columns. And the columns really correspond to the level of performance. And so right here, and, and this is kind of arbitrary, you know, whether you want to put the highest level all the way to the left or you want to reverse that and maybe have maybe have the next one, which is the poor one, and you just switch places. All this is done when you're developing the um, the uh, the criteria. If you develop the criteria and and, uh, and and you do this in advance, and I always recommend to have the criteria written down somewhere so you're referring to it. So it's just a matter of copying and pasting. You know, uh, when you're creating these uh, these criteria, I guess tables. To make sure that this is what you want rather than than doing it on the fly you can do it but the chances for making an error are there uh, another thing is that once you've once you finished with this um, rubric and once you've graded even if it's just one and one uh, criteria you can no longer edit this particular route you can create a topic i mean uh, you can create a a copy of the rubric and then edit that so it's best to, from the get-go, to have something you're referring to that you've thought over, that you've you've built, and that you feel comfortable with, and, and decide this is what I want to use, and then build it. Uh, you know, you might have two monitors, and so you're looking at one monitor for what it looks like, and then you're and the other monitor you're actually building it out in the course, and so uh, it makes it a lot easier. So you can see right here we're ranging the performance uh, ranges from poor to fair to good to exemplary. And you'll notice that the rubric type that I'm using here is percentages. But as I mentioned earlier, you can use percentage ranges. You can use points or point ranges as well. Okay. So the last aspect of this table really is the cell. And those are the individual cells I had mentioned before. It's, it's not really two by two contingency table. But if you go uh, by, um, by the row and you look under the specific column, you'll see, okay, this first criteria is knowledge of subject matter. And in order to get an exemplary score, that's 100% because we're using percentages in this case right here, the student must bring forth new or expanded ideas that reflect high-level critical thinking on the topic and demonstrate practical application. Okay. So let me just see. If I if I go over here on the other side right here, you know, this is still in the same column, but if I if I go to the under the poor column, students displaying only a minimal grasp of the concepts covered does not expand uh, upon the central concepts. That's what a student would recognize if they if they earned a, a poor score of 25%, or however, you know, if I used points, it would probably be just, I don't know, one point or whatever. Um, students would be aware that, that uh, they have specific feedback. And this is something students will see when I've graded them. Students will be able to say, well, I got a score, but the score may not be specific. When they look at their accompanying uh, rubric, interactive rubric, and, and uh, it'll have all of their scores and it'll explain that. And in the seven or eight years that I've been using interactive rubrics, I've never had an example where a student disagreed with how they were scored. I've had that where they disagreed, in which I referred them to the rubric and I said, okay, okay, just explain to me if you, if you can tell me why you think you you deserve maybe a higher score based on the rubric criteria description. Um, please let me know. And I've never had a student who who was ever able to to do that because they look at it and it's quite clear. It's not it's not subjective. It's very objective. And this is why it makes it fair for students because you know they can see clearly where where they need to what they need to work on for the next time. Wanted to mention some parameters, uh, somewhat limitations. It's probably not the best graphic to use a uh, barbed wire, but this is DeKalb. <laughs> All right, so percentages, percent ranges, points, and point ranges. And this is something I just added to this uh, uh, this workshop because it, uh, like up until October, it was not available, points and points ranges. Uh, there is a limitation on the maximum size of the grid, so you can have 10 columns and 10 rows, but you can have, you not, not possible to have 11 columns uh, or 11 rows. All right? There is a character uh, limitation per cell of 1,000 characters, but I mean, you know, that, that provides you with ample space to be able to clearly define what it is you're measuring. And then rubrics can only be associated with assessments with with no questions. Okay, can only be uh, can only be associated with quest with no questions. 
And so um, now this is something I think that's changing and that, and, and that Rubik's eventually or maybe even uh, coming quite soon, you'll be able to use a Rubik for questions on a, uh, on a test or exam. Okay. Uh, you cannot edit a rubric after it's been used for grading. This is one of those things. And, and, and actually, I experienced it as I was preparing for this workshop. Um, I just graded one aspect, uh, uh, one uh, criteria. And then I said, oh, no, I don't think I should do that. And that rubric was, was set in stone, in digital stone. I couldn't change it. So I had to go back and I had to get a copy of it so I could modify it like this. So it, it's just it's mildly annoying, but it's not impossible. But once again, as I said, um, you really want to make sure that that rubric is ready for prime time when you're ready to start grading it. So you, no changes after you start grading it. Okay, and you can't create rubrics on small screen uh, with those only reads. One of the one of the benefits of the ultra course view is is that you can you can read a lot of the content in in the course. This is primarily for students who are using mobile devices like their phone, maybe even a tablet. Uh, but for faculty, you really want to be sitting on a laptop or a desktop to be able to. Uh, create rubrics with with that. You're going to need that that level of space. Okay. In terms of creating rubrics, and there's a, there's a couple of different ways um, of doing that. Uh, you can log into Blackboard. You can open up your Ultra Course view. Uh, Ultra Course. Uh, uh, Ultra Course. Um, I guess it is a view. Or if you have a shell that you're working on, it's like a sandbox. You're building out the course, and then eventually you're going to copy that course into a new course that you're requesting for the upcoming semester. But any, in, in any event, you're, you're going to click on the, on the gradebook icon at the top. Um, and you're going to click uh, on the gear icon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through all these steps right here. This is really for your own benefit. You'll be able to refer to this um, uh, when you're actually doing it. But, but this is being recorded, so you'll actually be able to see me do it in real time. You want to make sure that you, create, you click on the create a uh, new rubric, and then you're going to name that rubric. OK. Just wanted to um, uh, add a little bit more specificity. You can add a row or, or a column uh, by placing your cursor in between, you know, from uh, from the the headings right here. This is the column or row headings. You just uh, place your cursor over, it and you get to see a plus sign, and you'll be able to add an additional row. Or uh, if you want to be able to add columns, you have to put it, you know, uh, between the columns. Okay. If you decide that you don't want the added row any, uh, after all, you can actually click right here. There is a trash icon, and it'll eliminate either the row or the or the uh, the column, depending on on what you're uh, what you've identified. If you want to edit a specific cell, and that would be the little boxes, that is uh, sort of the cross reference between the uh, the row and the column. Uh, you just click there, and you're going to see a pencil icon that appears, and that's pencil icon, and that you you can see it right here. Pencil icon simply is the uh, is the universally recognized icon for editing. And then when you're done creating uh, this rubric, you'll click the save button, and you'll have a rubric ready to go. Okay. Associating the rubric with an assessment really requires that you're creating an assessment, maybe an assignment or discussion board uh, that you uh, form that you've created. And, and I'm actually going to show you how that's done here. OK, so this right here, this is just a list of instructions. I don't want to have to read it. I'll actually show you. But you'll have this as reference. By the way, I'm going to be sending you the uh, PowerPoint slides so you can refer to it as well. Uh, from the student view, students will be able to get in uh, and, and, and look, be able to, to view the assessment. They'll be able to see how the, the item was graded with a rubric. Okay. And then this right here is sort of a description of how to grade using a rubric within a, uh, within a, uh, that's associated with a particular assignment. Okay. And then right here, if we want to modify the rubric, uh, we can we can go and, 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 and copy and paste and edit an existing rubric, as long as that rubric has not been used uh, in a grading process before. And, this, and uh, once again, I will walk you through all of the steps to be able to do that. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to stop sharing this slide, I'm going to, and I'm going to walk you through another uh, another slide. And, and this is actually once again these, these are screen captures, um, but uh, this will give you an idea and prepare you for when I actually walk you through it with uh, by sharing my screen. So in this example here, I'm creating a discussion board, 
Uh, you, you may have used discussion boards in your assignments before, but whenever you're creating something, a discussion board, an assignment, you will have the option of selecting whether the this is going to be graded. And for the for the most part, most of these <laughs> will be graded, uh, but some sometimes people want to have a discussion board, you know, such as a uh, a question and answer discussion board, which isn't going to be great, but it's really it's for the benefit of, of everyone in the course asking questions about about the course. But for the most part, you know, people want to be able to grade those things. And so you'll have to click on the box here that says grade discussion. It says this discussion counts for a grade. And when you do that, you'll notice that now you have a number of other options that are available. Okay, you want to participate, uh, you decided whether you're going to use points or percentages or whatever it happens to be. And if you're using points, what the maximum point total will be. Okay, and you can, you can just, you can just uh, put that information uh, in the appropriate area. But also you'll notice that there's an additional tool because you've chosen, you have chosen to uh, use a rubric or no, you've chosen to, to, to grade, you'll have an option of using a rubric. Now, not everyone who grades will be using a rubric. This is what the purpose of this workshop is for those who decide they want to use a rubric this is how you would do that you would click here add grading rubric okay just identify that and then it'll get you into this screen here in which you have a chance it'll say add grade uh, grading rubrics and for this course, in this example, I've already created a rubric. It already exists for this course. It's called the Individual Case Study Analysis Assignment Rubric. It's for 50 points. Now, my discussion board assignments typically are not as uh, not as high. I think there's 20 points. So this is not the one I want to use. I'm going to have to go beyond that. But if I want to just check it out just to make sure, I can click on View, this little View link here. And uh, it'll open up, and it, it, I'll be able to see, OK, this is uh, this is what it'll look like. Now, Collins, I had mentioned to you that there is there is an opportunity to get more, uh, uh, I guess, granular in terms of how you grade. This is an example of using a point range. And so in order to get an, a score of excellent for the summary of the story, I can, I can assign either 10 points, which is the highest level, or 8 points, which is not as high, but still is in the excellent category. And this provides me a final level of, of assessment rather than just saying, well, you either get 10 points, or in this case, right here, the next column would be 7 points, whatever it happens to be like that. You want to make sure that you have, you have that covered so you give them more, uh, you, you give yourself more options. So right here, this would be point range. That's a type of rubric. Uh, I've got a number of different uh, criteria, summary of the story, situational awareness, prudential reasoning, ethical reflection. Um, this, is a, this is a screen capture. Obviously, there is more points. Uh, there is more criteria. And then right here, I've got the levels of performance, which is excellent, good, limited, or poor. And so just make it a comparison for people to get anywhere from 8 to 10 points, which be, give them an excellent uh, category. Provide specific and comprehensive details that fully summarize and illustrate all aspects of the case study uh, versus those who fail to provide any details of the story. Uh, now, that rarely is the case, but I, I need to make that as, as a possibility because somebody could be working on something the last day that it's on uh, the day it's due, and that's probably where they, where they might end up. Okay, so that's an example of a, um, a rubric that I created, but it's not appropriate for the, the assignment that I have in mind, which is the discussion board. So in that case, I'm going to click right here, create a new rubric. Okay, and it'll give me an opportunity. What I have essentially is a blank slate, a tabula rasa, okay, a blank slate in which I can give a name right here. I can click here and, and, and type in the name, um, and it could be discussion board, you know, a discussion board. Uh, for what I'm going to be using, and, th and this rubric will be this, the rubric that I use, grading rubric, that I'll be using for the entire semester for all of my discussion board assignments. And so I'll just probably just need to call it discussion board rubric or whatever. Okay, and then I can go down here, and then and then in a live example, when I click on this, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be or just cursor over. I'll I'll see that pencil. I'll be able to edit. I'll be able to change the the uh, criteria. Right now, it's just by default criteria one, criteria two, criteria three, and I'll be able to put in a specific uh, criteria name that I'll be looking at and uh, now this level of performance so I can keep that as an excellent satisfactory unsatisfactory or poor or I can go in and I can change what I call those things 
or if I want to, I would just put my cursor in between, you know, the, the, the columns where I have that little circle with a plus sign and I'd be able to add another uh, uh, column or uh, I could do the same thing uh, by adding a row uh, by, by placing my cursor over that. Okay, so you get an idea of what, of what uh, a blank slate looks like. Once again, there are just four uh, criteria, but you can add more. And as you add more, it will change. It will, it will be reflected in the percentages if you're using a percentage rubric type uh, or points. Okay. So this is, you can see right here, and it's, it's called the discussion board rubric for 2022. This is what I'll be using when I teach in the fall semester, and I can just work on adding all of the appropriate information. Okay, and this is an example of just putting the cursor over, you know, in, in that bottom area um, to add an additional column. Uh, I'm saying in this case it's an, an additional row, but I can do the same thing by putting it between two columns or at the end of the column, maybe maybe over here, to add an additional column, if appropriate. And this is what a finished one looks like. Okay, so it's got, it's got five criteria, and it has um, uh, four levels of performance. Now, I'm, I'm using, in this case, a percentage. But what if I decide, you know what, I think I want to change that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be adding a percentage range. So I've got 75% uh, to 100%, 52 uh, less than 75%, and you can see right here. So it gives me, once again, an ability to be specific. So Collins just sort of uh, addresses the question that you have. Maybe you, you can do this for, for lower score numbers. Um, uh, I'm more comfortable doing that with, with criteria and higher uh, number of, uh, of points. Okay. Now I can also use points. Uh, here's an example right here. This is what I was talking about, Colin. So in this case right here, I have four points instead of percentages. I've uh, For exemplary, I've got three points for good, I've got two points for fair, and then I've got one point for, for poor. And so not a lot of space, not a lot of, you know, and, and so once again, not really sure if I can do maybe 3.5. That puts me in the exemplary category, but that probably would be more likely uh, like a point range gives me the ability to do that, okay? All right, any questions about what a discuss, what a rubric, the, the process of, of creating a rubric is? Once again, this is just a first run through. I'm gonna actually, gonna actually show you in just a minute. Yes, Bill? Yeah, I have, I've had a thought <coughs> about this. Um, is there any way that Black, I don't know if it will work in Blackboard, but is there any way where you can have multiple raters and it's combined? And the reason I say that is because in music, as you know, a lot is subjective. So what if we had criteria like um, rhythm and phrasing and expression and that, that kind of thing? And people have different opinions. <laughs> and, uh, and so sometimes you want, like in a competition, you have multiple judges. I happen to be on the competition committee this year here. Mm -hmm. um, so is it possible to have um, many raters combined in Blackboard using a rubric? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, because a rubric is tied to a specific grade and a specific student, I don't think you have that level of, of uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. There has to be one person doing the grade. And so it, this is a possibility. Maybe you have somebody who is, who is an expert in one particular aspect who, who, who is also grading, could go in and provide their assessment there and then save it. And then somebody else who is an expert in another, in another aspect of the rubric could come in and, and do that. They'd, of course, all have to have the ability to grade the student. And so what you're doing is you're, you're saving a partial, a partial uh, rubric score. And someone comes in and, and, and adds their, their component. But in terms of having multiple people assessing one criteria, I don't think that's something which, uh, which uh, interactive rubrics in, in Blackboard, it, I don't think it, there's anything that provides that level of flexibility. Yeah, of course it can be done just externally. There's no problem with oh, that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is one of those. This is one of those processes. You know that that it creates a little bit more. Uh, uh, ease of use in an online course, but in terms of, yeah, um, not really something that, that expands to that. That probably would be better off doing on a, uh, on a I guess, individual hand uh, paper and pencil uh, uh, situation. Okay? 
Yeah, thanks. Thank you. That's an excellent question. Okay. So once you've created that, that rubric and you've decided this is what the rubric I'm going to use for this assignment right here, you want to use the, use the rubric possible points. You want to, uh, now you can go back and you can look at it by clicking on this, on this view uh, link here. And then once you've decided this is what you want to do, you want to click the add. And so this rubric now will be associated with that particular assessment. In this case right here, the discussion board assessment. And you can see it's called the discussion board rubric. So every time I create a discussion board rubric form topic an assignment, I will, I'll say, I'm, I'm going to use 20 points, uh, you know, uh, in grading this, and I'm using the discussion board rubric 2022 uh, uh, for the assessment. Okay. So once again, click on the view to, ch to make sure that you're, you're sure about what you want to do, and then click on the add if you said, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to be using. So now, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but this right here, now it's the additional tool, rather than, than not having any grading rubric associated. Now we see that it's associated right here, Discussion Board Rubric 2022. Okay. So a person goes in and they, they submit their, their, uh, their uh, post, they make a post, okay? Let me just mention this right here. It says grading uh, grading rubric says this uh, item is graded with a rubric. So students are know know about that. They can click here. They can see what that rubric is, um, and then they can write it according to um, uh, that rubric. So they're more likely to be accurate in, in how they do. Uh, these are the levels. Uh, these are the criteria. Knowledge of subject matter, evidence of research, addresses the assigned topic, originality, and response to others. And they, they would click on this down, drop down arrow, and they'd look at all of the specifics for how to get a good score for the knowledge of the subject matter. Okay. And so when they do that, it would open up like this. So subject matter, exemplary, brings forth new or expanded ideas. Uh, good, uh, presents new or expanded ideas and makes a practical application, but not as much as, as the uh, exemplary area right here. So it's, that's the difference between a score of three and four. And then you can see the others as well. In addition, you have this, uh, this box to provide feedback. So you can get very granular and, and provide comments within each criteria or just, just assign a, a point value here. And then at the end, you'll be able to uh, provide feedback overall for the, uh, for the, uh, the discussion board uh, submission. So you have some level of flexibility there. So now I'm, I'm in as the instructor, and I, I see this, this person's submission. In this case right here, I, I just went in as a student preview and submitted it my, as myself. Okay, so how, how am I going to access the, um, how, how am I going to access the grading rubric? Well, there is this pill, I think it's, it's at, um, I call it the rubric pill. It looks it's more like a capsule. Okay, so if you click on that, it's going to give you access to that rubric. It'll open up on the sidebar right here on the right-hand side, and you can go by and, and do exactly what we did before, you know, by looking at the knowledge of the segment. That's the first criteria, and I would have clicked the, the drop-down arrow, and I just make a decision. Okay, that this is a really good submission. So I might click four here. And then if, if, I, if warranted, I, I might click in this area in the box, criteria feedback, and provide that level of support. And when I'm done with that, then I would click the next down arrow for the evidence of research. And then it would open up and it would have its own uh, descriptors for that, uh, that particular criteria. Okay, and you can, you can assume that. So we got knowledge of subject matter, okay, and then providing the specific grades for, for, for that. And, and then once again, criteria feedback. So this makes it very consistent. It's very nice to have that right here. And then you move on to the next level. So let me uh, let me share my screen. I'm going to stop sharing the slides here, but I'm going to share my screen to walk you through what it, what it would look like in real time. Okay. So just let me do that. Application. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So I said I would show you how to associate a rubric with an assignment. So here we are with an assignment. This is an individual case study analysis assignment and I'm going to edit that. I'm going to click here to do the edit and as I scroll down I'll note that there isn't anything that indicates that there is a, a rubric associated with it. So I'm going to click on the gear icon and now I can make changes as I want to, one of which is to 
uh, scroll down here. One of which is to add a grading rubric. So I'm going to click on Add Grading Rubric. And I look to see I have indeed created a rubric for this assignment. This is the individual case study analysis assignment. So I'm going to click here, Use. I know it is. I can actually view it firsthand. And I can see that it is the one that I want to use, which is great. OK. I go back out again. And now I'm going to make sure that I'm using the points for this, use Rubik's Possible Points. And I'm going to click Add. So now I've added that rubric, and I can see Grading Rubric, Individual Case Study Analysis Assignment Grading Rubric. So it is indeed has indeed been added. I'm going to click on Save. All right. So now, if I want to go in as a student to submit this assignment, this is what I would do. I'm going to click on Student Preview. I'm going to start the Student Preview. And I'm going to that assignment as a student, Individual Case Study Analysis Assignment. And I can see immediately that this item is graded with a rubric. So as a student, I might be interested to see what are the criteria, uh, criteria that are being used. So I see it's summary of story and situational awareness, prudential reasoning, ethical reflection, and use of outside resources. And I can see specifically what I need to do to earn higher scores. Okay, For the summary of the story, in order to score between 8 and 10 points and get an excellent score, I need to provide specific and comprehensive details that fully summarize and illustrate all aspects of the study. Great. Okay. And I can do the same if I scroll down and look at the other criteria. Uh, so here I go. So now I'm ready to submit that assignment. So as a student, I'm clicking here. And I'm going to click on View Assessment in order to submit that assignment. Also can check at this point for that rubric, see what it looks like. And when I'm ready to submit, I'm going to click and I'm going to attach this rubric. OK, Attachment. All right. And I see where that is. This is what I'm submitting. There's the item. Great. And here's the submission. Yes. OK. So now I've decided and I've, I've submitted that. And now, as uh, an instructor, how would I grade that? Well, I'm going to leave the student preview. Go, to, go down to exit. And now as the instructor, I'm going to go to the grade book. I'm going to pick that one. So this is my preview student user. This is the individual case study assignment. I'm going to click on that and then view. And then what I can do is I can go down and I can view this assignment. Scrolling down, I can even use some of the the features here to add comments to it. But I want to use my ability to grade using the rubric. So I'm going to click on Rubric. And there it is. So I can actually go down here and, and apply this. And after reading the actual submission, I can provide my assessment. I can click here and then provide. For Since this is a, uh, a point range, I can put anywhere from 8 to 10 points if it falls within the excellent category. So I'm going to put eight, uh, 9 points there. Okay. Then I'm going to go down to the next category, which is, or the next criteria, which is situational awareness. And I figured, let's see, that this person did very well in providing information on that. And I can go down and, and provide the scoring for the rest of these points. OK, so maybe the person didn't do as well in this one. So I might just give a score of 7. OK. And then provide uh, scoring for the remainder. So this person may have provided an excellent ethical reflection. And use of outside resources, once again, a student might have done very, very well. So they may score 10. Fantastic. Now, one of the things I didn't uh, want to forget is that as I 
provide the scores for each one of these criteria and also have the capability of adding feedback in this area right here. So if there's something I need to say regarding this criteria, uh, which is summary of the story, I can put it in right here. Okay. So now that I've done all that I need to do with that, I can go back and I can provide general feedback if I want to. So not specific to any criteria, but but um, I can provide something which is more generalized in this area here, feedback. And uh, provide that uh, meaningful feedback to the student um, depending on, on how they performed so they get a good sense of, of where they stand. All right. So when I've submitted everything I need to to provide feedback for the student, and I might just say raise this, uh, you did a fine job, and I might even identify where they could uh, improve. Bye. All right, and I'm going to save that. So now the student has a good sense, well, I provided the student a good sense of where they were, how they performed in this particular uh, assignment. Okay. So now that I provided that, I want the student to see what, how they did. So I'm going to click on student preview. All right. I'm going to go right to the student preview. And now I, uh, as a student, I want to see what I got. What was the grade? So I click on grade book. Individual case study. Oh. So now that I provided the score, I want to make sure that I posted this score for the student to view. So I'm going to click on post so the student has access to that information. And now I'm going into the student preview. So as that student, I can now, so that as that student, I can see how I perform in that particular assignment. So I see the individual case study analysis assignment. I see that the grade is 46 out of 50. Oh, well, I did pretty good. Could have done a little better, I thought. But if I click on this uh, pill for the grading rubric, and it does tell me that, I can look at the rubric and see exactly how I scored. So, I got a 9 out of 10 for summary of, uh, of story. Did very well with situational awareness, scoring 10 out of 10. Uh, didn't do as well as I could have for prudential reasoning uh, seven, and hopefully there is a uh, some feedback in this particular uh, category. Okay, ethical reflection, very good, ten points out of ten, and use of outside resources. So now, as a student, I have uh, a very good idea of how I performed in this, just by looking at uh, granular level descriptions for each category. So in that category that I only got 7 out of 10, I know that for under prudential reasoning, I got that because I, I list the significant moral agents with general descriptions of their perspective. However, if I wanted to do better, I would provide comprehensive listing of all significant moral characters as well as specific comprehensive descriptions of their perspective. Ah, so now I have a much better idea of where I can improve. Once I know that, now I can go back as the instructor. But I just wanted to add this last thing here, which is some considerations. Uh, whenever you use a rubric, you need to consider whether it's valid. Does it really measure what it purports to measure? Does this rubric assess what it intends to assess? Always, always important to be able to do that. And sometimes you use a rubric that, that has been used by other, uh, other faculty in, in the past or it's a well-known uh, you know, rubric um, and it has a lot of validity and reliability. It's just like an assessment or uh, an instrument that you're using uh, for measuring anything. Uh, it, clarity, is the rubric understandable? And so uh, that's why it's so important to be very explicit in 
the language that you use so that the students see that, they'll be able to see you know, an, inherently exactly what it is. And it may be that you need to include uh, a discussion about this at the beginning of the course so they'll understand how the rubric is being used and how it, it could benefit them. And also, uh, is it fair? Uh, are expectations reasonable for your students? So if you say you want them to demonstrate some sort of a task, uh, make sure that in your uh, yeah. course content and your uh, activities uh, that, you, that you're going to be showing them how to do that. And so you can't be measuring them. You can't, you know, say that this is a, one aspect of uh, this is one criteria I'm using. If you didn't teach them how to do it in the actual course, so you want to make sure that they're reasonable expectations uh, in terms of what what they should be able to demonstrate to you. I'd like to thank you all for attending today's workshop session. If you have any questions, you can follow up with me, and I'd be happy to respond. Thank you so much, and good luck.